We're back tonight. <laughs> on the Michael and Dando Show, 94.7 The Pulse. Now, on the line, we have uh, Bradley Hutchinson, co-creator of the Facebook page, Band the Burger Day. How are you going, Bradley? Good, thanks. Now, Bradley, me and Michael would just like to know, um, what gave you the idea to come up with this Facebook page? Um, the idea originally originated with my friend Kai, who's very active in... Um, uh, it had something to do with the fact that the hoodies were banned, yeah? Banning the hoodies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I was getting to that. And then the Carnator Matthews case happened just as he was getting passionate into the banning of the hoodies, which prompted him to launch this whole thing. So what is it about the banning of the hoodies that he, he, ra- he has issues with? His issue is largely just that you can't go anywhere in public... Um, with your face covered, but um, Muslim women are allowed to wear a burqa or a niqab in public and well, are allowed to do so. Well, what the, what the the banning of the hoodie is, it's actually something that was very successful in UK shopping centres where it actually lowered the crime rate in the shopping centres by 50%. Um, I, I'm under the impression that this uh, potential ban was only um, to be held in shops and things like that where, to be completely honest, that's not your property. If the shopkeeper has a problem with what you're wearing, he should be able to say so, should he not? Yes, he he should, and I uh, agree with the UK banning of the hoodie. I don't like hoodies personally, and I don't wear any. Mm-hmm. But I think, and Kai agrees with me, that the ban should be a blanket ban on any sort of face covering. Yeah, no, I, I kind of, I, I can see where you're coming from. I mean, you know, that's what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And if the ban on hoodies is there to lower crime, then surely the ban should be on the niqab as well. Um, however, the hoodie has no spiritual or religious context for anyone. Um, is Kai aware that it's completely different? Well, in his mind and mine, it it isn't really different because... It's only a minority of Muslims that wear the niqab and the burqa. Mm-hmm. And I've been in contact with several Muslims in Salah's Kai, and they've, most of them have turned around and said that there's nothing in the Quran or in their beliefs that say women have to be covered from head to foot in what is essentially a large tent and made to parade around the streets. However, however, if you watched um, Can of Worms at all, well, they actually spoke about this issue. Um, they actually had a pre-recorded interview with a Muslim woman who said wearing it made her feel closer to her God and that empowered her. I mean, should we also ban people wearing the cross? Because I understand facial coverings like motorcycle helmets, hats and hoodies, they're one thing. But when you go start um, messing with someone's religion that's a whole different kettle of fish. I mean, if that's what makes them feel close to their God, then who are we to say, you can't wear that in public? Well, we would be the citizenry and we are the ones in charge of saying what is acceptable in public and what is not. But saying ban the burqa, no one's saying ban the hoodie. They're simply saying don't wear it in a shop so you can rip stuff off. I mean, why say ban the burqa or ban the niqab? Why not say if you go into a store and the owner requests you take it off, then you take it off? That seems much more reasonable. And it is, and essentially that is all we are asking for. Ban the burqa was just a sort of slogan Kai came up with. Well, it's a stupid slogan. He's aware of that, right? I mean, it's implying that they shouldn't be allowed to wear a niqab or a burqa regardless of where they are. I mean, this, unfortunately, this Facebook page is now not only speaking for Geelong, but it's also speaking for Australia. And is the message that should be going out about Australia that we want to ban people's right to practice their religion? I I honestly do not know. Because this is the problem. When it's just three guys sitting around saying, yeah, we should ban the burqa, I mean, that's one thing. But when it gets onto a global status, which it has now, unfortunately... It's being spoken about internationally now. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, you are now speaking on my behalf, and I think we should need to be more careful about the slogans we use when you're speaking on a country's behalf. Well, what is going to be happening on Monday, man? Like, you got to wear a mask or a balaclava or something? Basically, yes. You just go about your daily routine like you normally would, and except your face is completely covered, like you would 
if you were a Muslim woman wearing a niqab. So it's, it's not a gathering of people, it's just wear a mask for the sake of wearing a mask. That's it, just wear a mask. Okay. There What's... no gathering, there were no rallies, no marches, nothing like that. Well, because well, it says in the papers they're predicting Cronulla-like riots because they think there's going to be ma- a mass of people getting together with masks and stuff, chanting things like, ban the burqa, etc, etc. So that's not what's going to be happening. Not that I know of, and nothing, um, nothing like that I would support. You are aware, though, that most um, even normal gatherings that become violent, that's never the intention of their creator. I mean, did you guys think about what a bunch of people walking around in masks could lead to? I mean, if I'm wearing a a mask, I'm empowered. No one knows who I am. I can do whatever the hell I want. Are you concerned that any crime or negative repercussions can come back on you guys? Because you you were the ones that said do this? Because we we know that you're no longer part of the whole thing because you pulled out, yeah, apparently. We've read that. I didn't didn't pull out. My friend Chris did. Oh, well, well, the paper has um, incorrectly said it, and they said that you did because of work. It says that his employer said that he had to take his name or remove himself from the... uh, from the page because they he listed the employer as his employer on Facebook. Is that correct? Um, I haven't actually spoken to Chris about that in depth, but it's my understanding that is essentially what happened. He made the mistake of saying who he worked for and he got into a whole lot of trouble by yeah. his boss. And you understand that that's because there's serious racial undertones to this whole thing, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, I... I Look, it's, it's a hard situation because I understand where you guys are coming from. I like to wear hats, for example. I'm very rarely seen without one. However, every time I enter a club or a pub, I'm asked to take it off. Is it bull? Yes, because I've never started a fight in my life. Um, but that's just how things are. I mean, it's a, it's a religious garment. They come from a very oppressive country. And I understand that they're now in our country, but our country also offers the right and the freedom to practice your religion. And for some of them, wearing the niqab is practicing their religion. Do you, do you have a religion at all? Yes, I'm Jewish ancestry, but I'm a practicing Christian. You're a practicing Christian. So, for example, say the burqa is banned, correct? Um, would then you be offended if wearing the cross in public was banned and let's say it's banned because uh, we want to make sure there's no racial violence on our streets. Or That's no, a pretty legitimate or reason. Or no stabbings with crosses or something. Yeah. It, it could be used as a weapon so you can no longer wear it. Can you see why the Muslim people can be annoyed about this? Yeah, uh, look, I understand completely why they're annoyed about it, but it's not like we're not asking them to not go to their mosque or not bow in the direction of Mecca or anything. We're talking essentially about an item of clothing that we don't want to see on the streets. Have you ever seen one on the streets? For a compromise. Have you ever seen one on the streets? Yes, in Burke Street in Melbourne. In Melbourne. Because I work in Melbourne and Geelong, and I've never actually seen one, and I don't believe one would offend me. What is it that you find so offensive about the burqa? About the person behind the burqa or the niqab, nothing. I don't like what it represents. What does it represent? To me, it represents um, the oppression of women by the extreme fringes of Islam. Mm -hmm. I I understand that that's what it represents to you. However, as we've already talked about, there are Islamic women, such as shown on TV just last Monday, who say that it empowers them. So obviously your perception of what it represents is wrong. Perhaps, but I'm, I'm not going to change that just because one person says that she feels empowered by wearing it. Well, she does wear it. It Doesn't one person saying she's empowered by wearing it beat a hundred Aussie bogans saying they don't like it? Not necessarily. Where I come from, the majority rules. If the majority in Australia says we want the burqa or the niqab off in public, then I have no problem um well well I have a problem or I um should it should it be majority rules if it's just blatantly being racist towards a religion though well I I, I don't understand how it can be considered racist I mean to get back to your question if the cross was banned as a Christian I would be disappointed if it was 
but it's just a symbol and you don't have to um, be hooked onto this symbol in order to practice your religion. Okay, no, no, that's fine. I completely understand where you come from. I'm actually going to use that frame of mind that you've got. I'm now going to convince 51% of Australia that it's wrong to use electricity. So Australia's going back to the Dark Ages because majority rules, right? Or how about this? How about um, if a woman cheats on her husband, we should be able to stone her to death in the middle of the street? How, how about I get 51% of people believing that? Majority rules, right? If you can get 51% to believe that, and more power to you. So you think murder is acceptable as long as the majority of people say it's okay? Essentially, yes, but good luck finding 51% of people or more to justify murder. Well, it's easy. I'll start a cult. You're saying that killing someone is okay if enough people say yes. Taking a life. You, as a Christian, are saying it's okay to butcher someone on the street if enough people say yes. I'm not saying that. You You just did. There. I asked you if majority rules works, does that mean I can kill someone if 51% of people say yes? And you said yes. Yes, I did, because you asked the question. So, as, as a Christian, you're saying it's okay to kill someone as long as 51% of people say it's okay. So, if I'm in a room with three people and I can convince one other person that killing someone's okay, I should be able to do that. Well, when you put it like that, it sounds stupid, yes. Well, I thought majority ruled, Bradley. It does in a democracy. And who says my bedroom's not a democracy? Well, See, this is the problem with this majority rules mentality. Saying majority rules on a global scale is fine, but you've got to take it down into smaller, smaller areas. Majority rules in a town could only be three people saying yes against two people saying no. How is that democratic at all? I mean, you started this site with three guys. Two guys. Oh, two other guys. So you it makes three guys. How would you feel if all of a sudden two of them turned around and said, well, you know, Bradley did all the Facebook coding for us. We don't need him anymore. We may as well kill him. <laughs> would you argue with them or would you be like, oh, well, majority rules? Yes, I, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, so it's okay to say majority rules when you're not the group being affected. But when you're talking about another group who's being affected by the majority, um, it seems a little, you know, a little harsh, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for the time, man. Thanks for um, having a chat with us about it. We appreciate it. That's okay. We might call you back on another time if uh, some shenanigans go down, such as riots and stuff like that. Well, thanks for the call, man. Catch you later. Okay, bye. My God, majority rules? <laughs> what the so. hell does that mean?